Hi, um, I just wanted to do a very quick video and I apologize for the crudity of this but I just want to do a quick video around um, getting the X-Touch Mini to work with Cubase. Um, I bought the X-Touch Mini uh, which is a great little unit and it's got a number of rotary controllers on there with LEDs um, you should probably already know if you're watching this video. Um, you can use it to control things um, via MIDI commands and I wanted to do that in Cubase to control the quick controls. So um, let me first of all just show you quickly what you can do. So at the moment I've got Cubase open as you can see on the screen. Um, and I've got quick controls here on the side. Uh, if you need to know about quick controls, probably best to go and watch another video on this. This is just how to get the X-Touch Mini to work. Um, I was scratching my head with this considerably. Um, <laughs> right, so. Basically, if you go into the studio option here at the top and we go to studio setup, um, move down to VST quick controls. So we've got um, eight controllers listed here. Now you might know this already, you may have had a play with it. If you click learn on here, you can click quick control one and we can go and move controller one. It now learns the uh, the message that's coming from the controller. Do the same with controller two, uh, and so on. I'm not going to do the rest of them, but one and two. So, as you can see on here, controller one is sending something on MIDI channel ten to address seventy one, which is great. And I've got the top here the MIDI input as the X Touch Mini. So I OK that. Brilliant. Now in my VST rack here, I've got a number of instruments. So as I move this controller, it controls Quick Control 1, which is over here. Brilliant. And this one controls Quick Control 2, which is brilliant. Uh, if you look at the LED rings, you'll see they move up and down accordingly. What they don't do, though, which is slightly frustrating, is when I move to another channel with another instrument, if you notice now, here down at the bottom, Controller 1 should be at full volume so it's the cutoff value here should be at full and the resonance which is being controlled by Q2 is set at zero the values on the controller I don't know if you can see it here but aren't set to that and as I move them they suddenly jump which is a bit annoying so you can do one thing very quickly if you again you may have tried if you if you're uh, going down this path is if you go into here you can quick click pickup mode so basically the controller doesn't jump around it latches to the point um, and only starts moving when it reaches that point so that's not so bad but it doesn't show you the value on the screen on the um, yeah, on the controller and as you jump around so this next one if I take this down to zero and I now click on drum kit 2 it's a, uh, here somewhere, there we go. On the screen, it's showing me um, half value, and actually, on the um, X Touch Mini, it's showing us off. But it doesn't give you immediate feedback, and it's very frustrating. So, I've, I read up on it, and it said you need to send, make sure you've got um, the output set, it should be sending back to the X Touch Mini the value via uh, MIDI channel 10 and CC controller 71 and that's in theory now, it doesn't seem to be working so if I just um, come out of um, if I come out of Cubase for a moment uh, just bear me one second okay so if I launch the Xtouch editor you see on the screen at the moment. We're not going to take through the whole of this. Um, again, hopefully you've, you've been playing with this and trying to get it working. Um, if we go to the encoders, um, first of all, actually, what we'll do is we'll just get the values from Bank A on the uh, hardware. Okay, so we go to the encoders, and you'll see. Forget the push bit at the top. That's when you click the buttons. I'm interested in the ones where we're turning them. So we've got encoder one is CC. And it's CC71, encoder 272, and so on. 
uh, got the values there and the type of LED ring we want. So that should be fine. So they should be transmitting those values. And I thought, as per the, the some of the manual, um, they should be receiving on that. There are two things you need to do to get this to work. So the first one is you need to go to global. And this value here where it says channel 1, global channel needs to be off. And that's a key thing. <laughs> I couldn't get this working with that, that set to off. Um, so you need to do that. You then need to make sure that you send that to the hardware. So although it implies that these things are set automatically, um, and it doesn't need to necessarily need to go to the bank, you do need to send it to the bank. So do to, to hardware, dump A, and save it. Okay, so we've now turned off global channel, and we've set our CCs as they were already, really. Okay, so let's go back into Cubase. Okay, so here we are again, back in Cubase. Uh, if we go up to Studio, Setup, check these values again. Right, what we can do is we can check. The mappings haven't actually changed, so I can still do the same. I can click Learn on Quick Control 1 and Quick Control 2. I could do Quick Control 3 if I wanted to show its mapping. There you go, 71, 72, 73, and so on. I've got Pickup Mode enabled. All oh, that looks great. Uh, now when I come back into here, uh, you'll see that I've got uh, this plugin enabled here. We can see values half on uh, the first controller, but if we look on the actual controller, it's showing as pretty much zero. Go to the next track, which changes the VST. That should be on full, no, it's not changed. So the other key thing, which uh, uh, it's not immediately obvious, uh, well certainly not to me. If you go back to Studio Setup, this last column here, there's also something that says flags. If you click these to now say transmit, uh, for the relevant ones, if you OK that, what you will see is as now as we move between channels, the values on the encoders move which is exactly what we want and as you see uh, if we let's take this one and yeah, this one's on full if I turn this one down you'll see oh you should see it move <laughs> there you go oh it's, it's because it's on right okay that is because we've still got it set to pickup mode which we don't need to do now so we can turn off pickup mode because the values are actually showing correctly on the encoder. So we don't need to worry about it skipping. So let's just take, uh, not that one, that one. So that's on half value, half value. So if we turn that, it'll immediately. There we go. And that works exactly as we really expected to. So hopefully that's, uh, I said it's a bit of a crude video, but hopefully it might help you out if you're trying to get this to work. Uh, it certainly caused me a bit of a headache and uh, it's now uh, half past one in the morning. been playing with this most of the evening uh, and finally got it working. So hopefully it'll help you um, and hopefully you, uh, you find that useful. So thanks for watching. Cheers.